I'm David Agus. I am a cancer doctor, a medical oncologist. I treat patients with cancer. I have a laboratory that does two things. One is develop drugs, and the second is build technologies that can help us treat patients better. I know that how we're treating cancer today is wrong. We classify cancer based on what they did in the 1840s in France, which is by body part. You've got a breast cancer, a prostate cancer, a pancreatic cancer. Uh, medicine is not a science as much as it is an art now. When I go in and see a patient, my gut tells me that that cancer is going to respond to this drug or that drug. It's not based on a number. It's not based on a value. What we're trying to do with this technology is to make it a science. That's what these technologies will afford us is the ability to personalize care, not just based on body part, but based on what's really driving the disease process. We don't have to treat all arthritis the same, all cirrhosis the same, all cancer the same. We should be treating by what the signaling pathways are and putting them back toward the normal. Groups like Eric Lander and the Broad, like the Human Genome Project out of the National Institute of Health, are studying the DNA component. DNA is our blueprint, is what makes you and I an individual. The DNA gets translated to RNA, and that RNA gets made to protein. In our lab, we're studying the protein. So the technology we use is called mass spectrometry. We take a drop of blood, put it through a superconducting magnet, and get a very high resolution picture of that. So 60 gigabytes from one drop of blood. And you go outside and take a picture of your child, or your mother, or your dog, you have a 10 megapixel camera, and that's pretty state of the art. This is the equivalent of a 60,000 megapixel camera, where we take out what we call the serums. We get rid of the red cells and take the yellow stuff, which are all the proteins in the blood. It reflects your metabolism, reflects your inheritance. If you have a cancer, it reflects the proteins in the cancer. So after a blood sample has been processed, it's loaded into one of these vials here. It's then loaded into this auto sampler. The auto sampler has a needle that will sequentially go into each one of these vials, pull out a small portion, and then load that into the flowing liquid stream. Comes through these two columns, then ultimately loaded into the mass spectrometer here. This is a superconducting magnet, and we use liquid nitrogen and liquid helium to supercool the magnet down to superconducting temperatures. So we could spin the proteins around and to be able to get that remarkably high resolution image of all the proteins. This is a touch table. So this is a way to visualize data. This is the 60,000 megapixel picture of the blood. This is a representation of you. If we go down on the table here, we can go down to where there are spots of repeated lines, and each of those are a protein. When I take this data of you and I say, listen, let me run you versus somebody else um, who's very similar to you, but with a disease that has slightly different characteristics. One patient is in red and one patient is in green. In this region, it's all green. In this region, it's red. So this is how one patient is different from another. This patient may have responded to a drug and this patient not. So we can then take the supercomputer and look at this data and start to understand what you are and how you're different or similar to everybody else, your age or with your disease. Each one of these blinking dots is one of the proteins in this big picture the computer is identifying. I can start to understand what they are, what they mean, how they connect, and I can go down and go into the national database and start to identify about that protein, why it's different, what it means in terms of a disease. And that to us is important, is that we can start to now individualize therapy because this patient may have this protein where another patient may not. So the whole concept to us is individualization and to being able to see the data and start to put it into context of what it means. And what's happening is a revolution. All of a sudden, we've got the dictionary. We've got the human genome. And so that's been sequenced. And we've got this reference. We can now take a cancer and compare to it, see what's normal and abnormal, and start to know the nodes on that network. So we can look at the big picture and make an impact. You've got 23andMe. You've got Navigenics. You've got Google Health, Revolution Health. All of those are means to personalize and to empower the individual. My goal is to bring new therapies and new technology to patients today. And part of that is bringing hope. I believe in the technology. I believe in what's going on is really going to radically change our healthcare and make us all better. So to me, technology is hope.